Hello folks. Today we're going to do a bit of a teardown of a cool little gadget. Look here, the ideal circuit breaker finder. These are actually pretty cool and let me to demonstrate how they work. Take our items here, plug the transmitter into the outlet you want to discover. Can't even really tell what's going on. But then, take the receiver, flip it on, then you just run it up and down your breaker panel until you get only one breaker that chimes. Now if you look at the side, you can kind of figure out which one it is. In this case, it's 10B. Now I already know for a fact which breaker this, out, this outlet um, connects to, but if you look at my panel here, I don't know if that's in focus, you will see that 10B is the North Garage Outlet. This is the only outlet on that, uh, on the north side of the garage, so this must be it. And we can test it out. Find 10B here, flip it off, and look at that, lights out. Must be the right breaker. So we're going to move into a teardown of these items, just a little examination of how they work. Up to the lab. Okay, we're up here in my lab, and here we have the product on the table. And I took the liberty of pre-separating it, and as you can already tell, it's pretty simple. Open it up. See if we can get in nice and close to this. Okay, we are here in the lab, and I've taken the liberty of pre disassembling the product. And here you can see the board. Now, I will have to apologize for many cuts through, the pro through this process because my camera does not autofocus during shooting. Go figure. Okay, you can see it's very simple. LED on the left, resistor for the LED, diode, capacitor, some silicon called Q1, a fuse, and just generic prongs. Pretty simple. Flip it over so you can get an idea of just how it's wired up. Took the liberty of pre-labeling a bunch of these items. Well, it looks like it's kind of wiped off a little, but you can see resistor there, diode there, um, capacitor there, Q1 there. You'll notice that it doesn't have three prongs through it, it's only got two, although the package actually does have a third prong in the middle. It's trimmed off above the board. Okay, let's hope my battery lasts through this. So here's the transmitter, and it basically consists of two parts. Input filter and pulse generator, and just an indicator. Best I can tell, the indicator just siphons off of the um, stored energy in the capacitor, kind of as a safety, sort of as a safety um, aspect as well. It's just an indicator, you know, it's nice to know when it's running, right? But the real tricky thing happens here. So we have D1 here, which is just serving as a halfway rest rectifier, so the current can only come in this way capacitor and a SIDAC. Now I looked this up and the SIDAC is actually essentially a DIAC. Um, it's a little more complicated than that but for the purposes of this application it may as well be a DIAC. Um, a DIAC is essentially like a Zener diode for AC. Uh, it doesn't pass anything until a certain threshold is passed, at which point it allows essentially infinite current. So, just this whole circuit here, the, um, the waveform is allowed cut. Okay, we're back again. So, I've taken the liberty of rejiggering the drawing a little bit. You can see I've added a few component values. 
Um, from this, you definitely could build your own, but I do not recommend it. It only costs about 20 bucks to uh, get one along with the receiver. It's already been pre-engineered, all the safety factors taken into consideration, etc. Build it yourself, you'd end up having to come up with proper um, enclosure, proper rating, spacings, etc. But I mostly just run them down for my own edification, so I just get an idea of what exactly is going on. So, in this case, um, I actually hooked it up to an oscilloscope. I'll bring up that screen in a little bit, in a little bit. But this is essentially what I was seeing. So, um, red is voltage on the line. Uh, black are just notes and center lines. I don't have the best steady hand. And the green is current values. So I looked up the SIDAC and it turns out it's ready for 105 volts and 1 amp. Continuous, of course. Um, but the important value is 105 volts. So I've kind of highlighted the 105 volt line approximately on my diagram here. And at when the voltage across the SIDAC reaches 105 volts, it suddenly starts conducting. And it behaves similar to a TRIAC, or an SCR, in that once it starts conducting, it'll continue conducting until the voltage across the device um, crosses zero. So, what you see here is the approximate waveform, although this is something that occurs on the order of microseconds, not the milliseconds that is depicted here. Um, so if we go back to the diagram, you can see that in series with the SIDAC and the rectifying diode is a 0.39 microfarad capacitor. So as the voltage across that capacitor increases, um, eventually it, it's also pushing the voltage across the um, SIDAC and once the SIDAC reaches 105 volts suddenly it starts conducting with essentially zero resistance. I suspect that the resistance across the SIDAC combined with the resistance of the fuse are pretty much the only things that limit the current. In this case um, I measure approximately a 50 amp pulse I suspect it could go higher if we were to plug it in right next to the breaker box where we get the lowest impedance, but I think about a 50 amps is what we're getting, and this 50 amps produces quite the magnetic field. Um, and it's that magnetic field that we're picking up. So if we look back at my workbench, I have taken the liberty of taking apart another um, receiver device. And this one was more of a manual one, and the one that I showed you earlier is a uh, automatic one. It just automatically sets the gain of the receiver. This one, you just have to twist the wheel until the receiver um, has the appropriate sensitivity. So, this is the receiver inside the handheld unit black and red wires, just connect to battery. Um, I haven't taken the time to reverse engineer this, and maybe I will, maybe I won't. I'm not sure yet. But basically it's a 555 timer, right here. Um, and the sensing unit is actually just this inductor right here. Um, looks like there might be... what is this? Uh, oh, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's either a diode or a transistor, but I suspect it's mostly just amplification of the signal from the inductor. So the inductor intercepts the magnetic field being produced by the 50 amp pulse I talked about earlier. And it affects the, um, it affects the oscillation rate of the um, 555. Um, if that oscillation rate matches, based on gain and such. Um, it, um, the waveforms, or the amplitude of oscillations gets to the point where it actually is capable of sounding the beeper. 
Um, that's yeah. that's about the size of it. Hope you learned something. I had fun doing this. See you around next time. I've managed to work out the schematic. I'm 95% certain this is what it is. Um, I haven't labeled any of the values or anything like that. I was mostly just trying to get the uh, get the basic idea down. Um, so down here, what's currently on the screen is the basic detector. Um, I had a bit of a um, incorrect statement before. I thought it was a free-running multivibrator that just changed frequency when it ran. But now that I'm looking at it, it appears as though um, this detector here detects a high current pulse due to its magnetic field using the inductor here. Um, pulls the trigger line low. Um, set this 555 I think is set up for a um, one shot um, pulse stretcher. Um, the output is connected to the buzzer here. Um, there is a capacitor across it because the buzzer actually has a tendency to inject lots of noise onto whatever it's connected to. Um, it's not a piezo buzzer per se, but it does have a piezo element and its own little oscillator built into it. Um, and then it just also connects through to the um, indicator LED. Um, it's got two resistors here in series with power. You know, so you get a lower brightness when it's just on, and then when the buzzer is sounding, it also injects power to this point here, thus making the LED come a little bit brighter. Um, I, I guess that's it, but let's move down here to my lab, and let's play with the, uh, let's play with the oscilloscope a little bit. Before we start this, I just want to make clear that any comments regarding how I should or should not be doing anything will not be allowed to continue on to the page, so don't even bother. Okay, so basically I've got the... Um, I, I have the basic um, transmitter here, just plugged into a short, shorty extension cord, which I've uh, pass through an inductor, a coil inductor, and I have soldered a resistor across it. So basically this is just functioning as a current, uh, yeah, what, what do you call it? So this is just basically functioning as a current transformer. Um, count of the windings, there's 80 windings on it. There are um, so I put an 82 ohm resistor across it, but you know, considering it's only a 1% um, resistor, it could be it could be either side of 82. So I'm just going to assume it's fairly accurate. You know, definitely more than accurate enough for our purposes here. So I've connected one oscilloscope probe to um, across the current transformer, and the output should be approximately one volt per amp. Um, if my calculations on that are incorrect, please correct me. I will accept any corrections on that front. You know, I'm I'm here to learn. Uh, I've connected the other probe to the voltage uh, input because this is all run off of the same circuit. Now I'm just assuming that the um, I'm just allowing. I'm just using the oscilloscope's ground for the other side. Not exactly the most prudent thing to do, but it's what I've got to do with what I have. So if we go over to the um, to the oscilloscope. So what I've got here is this is the trace from the current transformer. Um, I've got a times ten probe on it. So um, we actually so you have to actually look at the dark indicator in this case. So we're running at. Um, is it going to focus? Okay, so we're we're running at 10 volts per division, and as you can see here, 
what I'm detecting is approximately a 20 amp pulse going positive and a 10 amp pulse going negative. Now this is actually running at um, 20 microseconds per division so this whole thing lasts less than one division so actually let's try switching it 10 so I can get a little um, so we're, we'll say it's running at 10 microseconds so that pulse is 10 microseconds long so we've got a 20 amp pulse for 10 microseconds um, won't affect anything on the circuit but should be fairly easy to detect um, let's see if I can actually get this thing to show the um, the two waveforms side by side um, Let's see here, I've got channel one is my current pulse. Trying to find the um, current pulses in that very bright. Okay, I don't know if you can see this on the screen just with it, but right here there is a very fine, very faint trace. I think I'm just going to move this a little bit so it's at as close to possible to this division here or this vertical gradi um, graduation so if we switch this back you know remembering that this is approximately yeah, 50, 50 volts per division so we've got 50, 150, approximately 170. So you can see if the current pulse is happening right here at this approximately this intersection here, then the voltage on the um, the voltage across the diac is probably very close to 105 volts, which corresponds to what I detect from the um, data sheet. So I think this will conclude my video. I hope you had fun watching it, and I welcome any constructive criticism. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it, or I will delete it. Have a good day.